Well, thank you very much, Bishop Coyne. Uh, a lot of excitement around the upcoming International World Youth Day in Krakow, Poland, where actually I have been before, and it's, it's beautiful. But plans for statewide celebrations are underway as well. And Paul joins us from the USCCB's office to share those plans. Paul, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me. Well, tell us about your role as coordinator for the World Youth Day USA and the international observance. Sure. My, uh, my role really is to implement the vision of the bishops for World Youth Day here in the United States, which is actually more comprehensive than I think previously understood. It's, it's not just an event, but it's a whole process, a pilgrimage, as it were. Um, and uh, it's, it's not even just an international experience in one place, but really a global uh, encounter with Christ that's held everywhere. Um, but my role is to serve as the primary uh, liaison or communicator with all the pilgrim groups, to assist the bishops, to coordinate leader trainings, and to provide tools for pilgrims both in Krakow, but also around the world, uh, or in the United States especially, where they will, as be, will be as well. Paul, ironically, uh, joining us here at Catholic TV for the day is Alexis Grace Richard, who was my co-host at the last uh, World Youth Day, our coverage. Uh, but this stateside World Youth Day is a, is a great blessing because not everybody can, uh, to, can make it to Krakow this summer. How did the stateside World Youth Day celebration and, and process, how did this all begin? That's a great question. Um, it, it really actually, be, it's been going on for many, many years. But I think um, since uh, World Youth Day in Rio, when Pope Francis uh, explicitly called out and, and, and really offered a blessing to those who were participating digitally or states or, or in their home countries, um, it really called our attention to that. Um, and since then, um, our bishops have been very uh, helpful uh, in, in wanting to integrate that and make that more uh, a part of the World Youth Day experience. So it's kind of been ramping up for the last several years, um, and we're glad to continue doing that. Do you know how many, by the way, how many are registered for, from the United States for Krakow? Yeah, we just topped over 40,000 who are going to Krakow uh, from the United States. It makes it the largest contingent, largest delegation from the United States uh, ever outside of North America. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, what can pilgrims, uh, statewide pilgrims, expect? What are, what are some of the resources that are available? Sure. Um, you know, it depends on how they celebrate. Some people will be celebrating in their parishes, some in their dioceses. Um, some will be celebrating with their families. Um, and we've kind of tried to understand all those different things. So number one, we've linked uh, a lot of, um, on our website, we have a, a link to all the different stateside celebrations, the larger ones that are out there. Um, so for instance, in Connecticut and Washington, D.C., and in Harrisburg and Chicago, uh, in Texas. But also for those who are celebrating with their communities, we've been partnering with the Catholic Apostle and the American Bible Society uh, to be able to accompany those pilgrims uh, and to provide them a connection. So we'll be taking video um, in Krakow, um, but aimed at those who are celebrating stateside so that they don't feel that they're just watching someone else go on pilgrimage, but they themselves are integrated in the process as well. What have been some of the challenges, Paul, you've run up against? Because this is a huge undertaking, I'm sure, trying to gather all of this information and then also make it exciting for people. Well, the, the, the challenge, of course, is, is going to be, uh, for those who are going overseas, um, making sure that they don't feel that this is a one-and-done event. I think one of the biggest challenges that many people have is that they go to it almost as a vacation or they may go to it as uh, one event that of many that they experience in the church, but rather to see this as a catalyst. And so uh, the challenge, of course, is helping pilgrims uh, better understand that this is one part of their faith journey. It's a mountaintop moment, but it's um, it really leads them on to something more. So, of course, our challenge is, of course, changing that paradigm and not uh, not making people um, help people understand it's bigger than just an event. So, for uh, young pilgrims, be they stateside or in Krakow, what are some of the major takeaways that young people um, uh, find? through World Youth Day in general in the past. Uh, you know, what, what influences young people's lives in an experience like this? 
Well, it's certainly an encounter. It's an encounter with uh, it's an encounter with Christ in one way or another, um, and it can be in in the most unexpected ways. So I think that's one of the takeaways, of course, is where to find Christ in ways that you may not have expected before. Um, it's also uh, one of the other takeaways is that the church is universal. Um, I think that we can sometimes get caught up in just seeing our own parish, our own diocese, or even just our own country. Um, and so this allows our pilgrims, whether they're stateside or internationally, to know that they're part of a global family and to have that more uh, universal experience of the church that hopefully will take them um, you know, and, and, and remain with them for the rest of their lives so they feel they have a bigger connection, a more of a solidarity with people all around the world. So we hope that they take that with them, with them home with them, no matter where they are celebrating this. Mm -hmm. And with the explosion of media, and you, you kind of touched on this a little bit, Paul, in today's world, it's almost as if it's, it's interactive now where you're not just sitting in front of a screen, but people are more involved. This can just grow bigger and bigger uh, throughout the years now, can it? It really can. That's one of the other reasons the bishops were very excited to be able to uh, invest more in the stateside celebrations because of social media. Um, they can be, they can literally be right there um, through our uh, the the Catholic Apostolate Center, for instance, is having a weekly blog so that pilgrims before and after World Youth Day, whether they're here or there, uh, can journey with um, the pilgrim, journey with the the, the whole pilgrimage. Um, we'll have an app that's going to be able to allow people when they're here in the states to be able to um, literally feel like they're there. There's actually going to be some 360 degree video technology that allows them to on their phones feel like they're right there with Pope Francis. Um, and, and, and being a part of that experience. So technology and, and social media have really amplified this. It's made pilgrimage redefined in a whole new way. So before we let you go, uh, where can people access all of these great resources and learn more about World Youth Day? Is there a website? Yes, there is. Uh, if they go to wydusa.org, um, that's the Bishop's Conference website for, uh, for World Youth Day. And, uh, and so if they go there, they'll be able to link to stateside celebrations, um, our, our blogs, our, our, all of the other the videos, and all kinds of great resources they'll be able to find there. WYDUSA.org, easy one to remember, which is good for me, Paul. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us today. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Okay, Paul. Have God a great bless. day.